working, trying to kind of figure out the best way to use it and stuff, because it's cool back here. Like it does a great job back here in the bedroom. So this area stays very comfortable. However, as soon as you get past this hallway, it just doesn't flow as well. So I think it's about 10 degrees difference. Like if it's 70, 72 degrees back there, it'll be about like 80 to 82 degrees up here, which isn't terrible. It's a lot better than the 94 that it currently is outside. Got some reflectix. Gonna try to see if this helps a little bit. Um, so yeah, the windshield's not tinted. All these windows are tinted 5%. So it's definitely darker in here, but we're just gonna try to figure that out. But today's project, today's project's wicked exciting. And it's kind of like the beginning of a new thing. Beginning of a new thing. So the inside is like 99% finished. There's like two or three things that I have to finish. They're like nitty gritty details. But the outside's not done. And I haven't done a whole lot of research about how I'm gonna do the outside. Like I have a decent understanding. I don't know how I'm gonna spray it or roll it. What I should have done, and this is the tip, is paint your bus first and then add all the stuff on it. Do the roof rack, do your outlets, do your heaters, your storage boxes. Do that stuff after you paint it because now what I've created for myself is a lot more work. I now have to sand around all of these things. I have to tape off all of these things if I decide to spray it. If I don't decide to spray it, then I have to cut with a hand brush around all of these things. And that's just so much. Versus before, I could have just taped off the windows and sprayed it and been good to go. But now, I've got to go around the camera, got to go around the tail lights, the, the backup lights that I installed, the HVAC stuff. So today, I'm going to start, uh, I think, just sanding. I'm going to start sanding on the outside. That'll allow me to spend time with the bus and start noticing the things that I want to address, like some of these side marker lights, if I want to keep on these side badges, if I want to try to do any dent repair or, or rust repair that I think is necessary or unnecessary. So not super exciting, but it's exciting because it's the beginning of another phase and this is the last phase of our build. Aside from like moving in, which we might do a little bit later today as well. Start moving stuff in the inside, like the plates and the pillows and the blankets and you know, the homey things. So, all right, let's go. Definitely a new day. Man, I got paint. I got paint on everything that I own. My glasses got paint on them. My camera now has a ton of paint on it, but oh well. Today's a new day, but I wanna just kinda like, I didn't film a whole lot of the whole sanding process. I wanna kinda give you a little bit of what I call insights of my learning experiences in sanding the bus, what I found to be, what I found to work and not work. And like, I wanna emphasize the fact that I'm not going for a pristine coach class paint job. I'm going for, I don't want the bus to be yellow anymore. Um, I want it to last at least like five months and I want it to look good from like 15 feet away. Anything past that, anything more detailed than that, I just didn't care because this is a school bus. This is something that is gonna get beat up. I'm gonna back into something. I'm gonna hit tons of tree limbs and I wanna be able to touch it up as easily as possible. But I didn't want it to look terrible. So this paint job cost me like 500 bucks altogether with the paint sprayer, two and a half gallons of paint, but I'll get into those details later. As far as sanding goes, um, you can use, I use two different types of sanders, and one of them is a circular orbital sander, and then one of them is just a square palm sander. I found that the square palm sander was easier to maneuver around all the nooks and crannies of the rub rails, of the bolts and the screws and all the brackets that I had, whereas the circular orbital sander because of the circle, it just I couldn't get as close into the corners that I needed to. So I found myself having to grab like a separate piece of sandpaper and kind of like shove it up in there. So at first I was going to use 220 grid 
and that did a decent job making it like nice and smooth and getting some of that stuff off. But for the oil-based paint that I was using, I decided, you know what, let's, let's up the ante. Let's make this go by a little bit easier, a little bit faster. And I used 150 grit sandpaper. That seemed to do a well enough job to scratch the paint, get rid, get rid of all the, the residue and stuff that's on the paint currently. I'm at a client's house, like there's things going on. This is the client's house that we've been working on for the past year. I'm kind of like managing the house now, or the property. Anyways, I'm like a professional homeowner, which is kind of cool, but. So I used 150 grit. It seemed like it was doing a good job to scrape off all the old paints and kind of like rough up the surface. That way the primer would adhere to the bust a little bit better. Like I said, I did 220 in the beginning, but it just didn't feel coarse enough. Um, and then for all like the weird nooks and crannies, I used a like high intensity wire brush and I just scratched at whatever I could. So far we're like two weeks into the paint and it's held up fantastically. So yeah, that's how I did it. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to answer as many as possible. Um, it's like I said, it's a big learning curve, but I'm very happy with the way that it turned out for us. The sanding took about two days for our entire bus. Taping it off took about two days. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Like it if you like it, dislike it if you don't like it. And if you could subscribe, we'd really, really appreciate it. And I mentioned it before, I started a new page. It's called Schoolie Builders for Hire. And it's basically like, if you're building a school bus but need help with it, you can comment on this page and I'll post you up and try to find you a builder. Or if you are a builder who's kind of nomadic and wants to be able to travel to different locations and do school bus builds or help people with school bus builds, comment, tag, and I will post you up and we'll try to find you a client. So um, yeah, it's on Instagram. I'm gonna do a Facebook page at some point. Um, so just keep a lookout for that. It's Schoolie Builders for Hire on Instagram. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks.